This is a hacked broadcast signal. It cannot be traced. It cannot be stopped. This is the fallen network. We are the last revolutionary voice of the net. For the next few minutes, we will control everything you see, feel, and hear. We are now in control. We are the fallen. Salutations, I'm Mordecai Lacrosse, and this is In-Depth. And this video is an in-depth interview with Mimi of the Socialist Party of USA, who's running for United States President. So, let's begin. This video. Hello? Um, not much. So, you ready for the questions then? Yeah, I can't see uh, you on camera. Oh, okay. Uh, but is that bad? Are you, are you, will this be like for a video thing? Or? Yeah. Okay. Uh, one second here. Okay. I'm sorry? Do you know how to record this? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm ready when you I just can't see you, but okay. for the sake of what you're doing, maybe that's not a big deal. Okay, yes. Yeah, sorry that you can't see me. It's the way my phone is. Okay, don't no worry. All right, so um, first question. Uh, Bernie Sanders has helped shape the way that the U.S. sees socialism. What is your opinion of his view on socialism? Okay. And um, on Hillary Clinton, do you think that people ignoring the inherent danger of another Clinton presidency because of the possibility of the first woman president? So they think that if they say something about it, that they might be construed as being sexist? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. 
It answers my next question, which was, what is your opinion on the uh, Donald Trump presidency if he was elected? What do you think of the U.S. deploying troops throughout the world in the name of so-called democracy? Now, what is your opinion of the United Nations, and do you think it serves the common good for anyone? Uh, 
Israel as the you know, two of their votes. Uh, and it, it's hard not to see the U.S. as, as sort of a rubber stamp on the floor the U.S. and, uh, mm-hmm. you know, So um, on minimum wage, do you think um, $15 an hour for minimum wage is enough or is it not going far enough? Now, um, there's this whole uh, transgender bathroom issue that recently people keep on seeing the news. What is your opinion on the transgender bathroom issue, and why do you think they've made it into an issue at all to begin with? To try to maintain the status quo kind of thing. about who can use the restroom and who can't? I'm sorry? I said basically arguing about who can use what restroom and why kind of thing. Sort of a clinical. 
Mm-hmm. And when I think about them, I see red, you know, I, I want to find it. Um, and I, so many of the folks that I know um, who, who are involved in this sort of work, uh, so they're prepared to find it. They are finding uh, so many folks that have their, you know, just their fundamental human rights. Uh, just travel on uh, and just go along. Uh, I would love to see a day that's actually like this is what we fight for. Uh, when we have all hands ready to fight for these fundamental human rights issues, you know, everybody's ready to fight. Um, and I think, you know, we consistently try to find ways to really humanize the message. Uh, to make the message as sort of appealing as we possibly can to mm-hmm. bring folks in so that we have more folks ready to fight. You know? Yeah. For one of the part of here. Now, um, what is your view on the so called America is a Christian nation th- uh, thing that the Republicans are constantly pounding into people's heads as if it's a fact kind of thing. Do you think it has any bearing of what they say of it being a Christian nation, or is it just more stuff that they just happen to keep on spewing? To... You know, I live here. Uh, I'm not a Christian. Yeah. You know, my wife lives here. She's not Christian. And, you know, I've been around for a long time. Um, I feel like, you know, with the, you're saying Republicans saying this is a Christian nation, get that shit out of my face. You yeah. Know, uh, we were just, my wife and I were just having a discussion earlier about, you know, sort of the corrupting influence that organized religion has had. Uh, and uh, again, you know, some of these things are so absurd that it's like, I want to say, I have, you know, to have to discuss it. it uh, but I do understand that they're part of the discussion. Uh, but honestly, uh, a Republican who says this is a Christian nation. Uh, yeah, I think there are a lot of folks um, who would disagree. disagree. Yeah. Who lives here with big taxes here. Um, you know, why do they think that they have, uh, you know, uh, the right to direct, you know, how we see life in this country? You know? Mm-hmm. Recently, I was on Facebook, and a friend of my friend had posted on Facebook that socialism is not anti-capitalism. What would you say to this person or explain to him about socialism? Well, that's where they got that definition from, because uh, socialism, if anything, is anti-capitalism. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, if you have a capitalist socialism, well, it's not socialism, mm-hmm. you know? On um, global climate change, would reform save the planet, or do do you think there'd be need to be a total overthrow of the current system? Reform the planet, you know. I think the science says that yeah. like, not only can the planet, uh, you know, the carrying capacity, it can continue to hold a capitalist system or a capitalist system uh, reforms the capitalism. That's not going to cut it. What it's saying is that. It can't take any, you know, and he pushes the reform capitalism to green capitalism, all that bullshit, you know. Uh, it's like every day we get a new tipping point, you know, the evidence mm-hmm. is clear. Um, all these means, you know, to barter, yeah, they might be politi- politically expedient, all that kind of stuff, but as far as, uh, you know, making sure that, you know, this planet can continue to host life of the home, um, if the system doesn't change quickly, this whole, this is over, you know, yeah. and unfortunately sooner uh, rather than later, 
emergency, even for system change, you know? Um, there's a trick here. I think that when folks, and I understand this, you know, when folks see the, the information, the science behind this, it can feel, I think, it can be easy to kind of shift to sort of a, a nihilist look at this, like, all right, this is so bad, I don't know what I can do. We're screwed, you know? And I do understand it. It's, it's almost overwhelming, you know? And I think oftentimes folks are sort of looking for an answer uh, to the question, what do we do? What can I do? And it can seem somewhat hopeless and uh, futile. Uh, but I, I just don't see a reasonable or a rational alternative. Uh, to fight, to, you know, for system change. Yeah. Now, what would you say to those who deny climate change, since that seems to be a very popular thing political-wise, is to deny that global climate change is man-made? Especially when 97% of scientists, I believe, was the statistic I read, that 97% of scientists believe, you know, accept that global climate change is real. Where it has to even be talked about. What is your opinion on genetic modified organisms or GMOs? Uh, I think they're also called. I think a lot of the uh, negative reputation that GMOs get is actually from, uh, I think, Monsanto's it's pronounced or something. I think a lot of, the, 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're terrible. Uh, absolutely. Lots of them are terrible. Uh, without question, they're terrible. Again, uh, when we look at any industry, uh, whether it's GMOs or we look at uh, you know, like clothing or anything, um, Apple, Nike, whatever it might be, you know, uh, and it's capitalist economy. Yeah. Okay. Um, off politics. Do you have any favorite comedians or comedian, and why? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, so many. You know. Uh, shit, I love Bill Fitch, Richard Pryor, and Chad Burke. Uh, Bill Hicks is one of the ones I like as well. I like Bill Hicks's uh, "The Ride." I believe the quote is. That's uh, wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I think Rolling Stone would be really funny. Uh, I think I might have said George Carlin. Yeah. Uh, shit. On and on and on. Man, there's so many. John Candy and Canadian Bacon. That was a funny movie. Music question: Does do you believe that any modern music holds a candle to the music of the past, and is there any musicians that have the revolutionary spirit of some of the musicians and bands of the past? Uh, I think that music, uh, today that holds a candle to the music of the past. I don't, I don't say that to you know that great music of the past it's special. You know, uh, Black Sabbath, Black Sabbath. Miles Davis, Funkadelic, uh, you know, a lot of snow stuff, old punk shit, like the stages, uh, you know, the trance, killing joke. I mean, there are artists today who are just chilling, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I think much of the difference is that, you know, uh, you know, like arenas, uh, and TV doesn't show the hymns, um, uh, you know, they're not going to be played on the radio. As with anything else, you know. Well, there's the Deep Public Enemy, 
The radio, yeah. Do you have a favorite song by like any artist in general or or Same thing. It uh, changes from hour to hour, sometimes from minute to minute. It just depends on what I'm listening to. I got like tons of uh, music on my MP3 player from various styles of music. One moment I'll be listening to rock, the next I'll be listening to rap, and the next I'll be listening to you know classic pop. Not like you know some of the modern pop, but you know more of the classic sure. stuff. Yeah. Now, in your own words, how would you describe yourself? Well, I think there's there's that how I'd like to see myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lynn? Lynn? 
you know, uh, integrity is important to me. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I'd like to see. But my wife, uh, who, you know, spent more time with than anyone else, mm -hmm. she may have a different view. Uh, and, you know, for the sake of being honest, Really? 
folks have the opportunity uh, to express themselves, you know, to feel about, um, to run with their ideas, you know. Um, and everything that we've done, uh, it's, it's been such a, a, a collaborative process, you know. Um, we try to do things in a way that we'd like to see ultimately, you know, in society. Mm-hmm. Um, and our hope is that, like, as folks get the message, you know, as they see interviews like this, that maybe there's something about it that strikes a chord, you know. Um, yeah. And that empowers them to say, well, I'd like to get involved with something like this because, or they might be. I, I want my voice to be heard, you know. I want to be part of the decision making process. Um, so, I didn't even put you on the spotlight. No. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, so, I don't know where I was going with that, but maybe just to give you a little bit of a, you know, a different voice from the campaign. Mm hmm. Now, in conclusion, what do you think the Socialist Party USA can offer that can't be offered by other parties? Well, uh, you know, when I look at the individual members of the party, uh, you know, these are these are my comments, you know, and um, and I see that, and not to say that. That some of these things are important. Well, these things don't exist elsewhere because, of course, they do. Um, I know who I know. You know, they're extraordinarily passionate. Um, and uh, you know, I think one thing that yes, the socialist party folks do a really great job of is humanizing all of this. You know, um, you know, I think things like you know, the theory, the history, that's all incredibly important. You know. I think that um, the social smart folks do just a really great job of um, presenting that information and carrying that information in a way that feels inclusive and warm, you know. Um, I personally have had a lot of experience, you know, with folks on the U.S. left uh, where I feel like I'm being lectured or feels condescending or kind of... Uh, and I feel you have to so it can be prone to like an incredible unsectarianism and funny and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. I can put it on you, you know, uh, and it can work you rather quickly. Um, and I, I feel like a lot of the SP folks, a lot of social part folks do a really good job of uh, often treating another, you know, respectfully uh, and with dignity. Um, and of course, you know, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a different organization. Uh, it's a multi tendency organization. Uh, so there's not like a single correct line within the socialist party. It's not like explicitly a Leninist party, uh, you know, or a Maoist party or whatever. Uh, no. The idea is no. that everybody brings in, mm-hmm. you know, a unique perspective. And it becomes part of that experience, that process of uh, dialogue and exchange and all that sort of thing. For me personally, I, I don't want to be somewhere where somebody uh, has all the, you know, the right answers for me, you know. Um, I want to be able to participate and contribute to sort of a fluid uh, you know, dialogue uh, that's reflective of our condition today. Uh, yeah, their experience and that sort of thing. And for me personally, um, while the you know, Socialist Party certainly they are like any other any organization, yeah, you know, Socialist Party is certainly not perfect. Uh, and, you know, there are a lot of things to work on. Also, for me, um, having said that, I'm glad that's where I'm at. Okay. I can't think of any more questions. That was like all the questions I actually had typed up. 
get COVID because I gave them to and, you. And now, and the only reason I was able to have those questions is my wife actually helped me with them because <laughs> I couldn't think of anything to say. Oh, yeah, that was great. Yeah, that was great. Well, so, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Um, so that's the end of the interview. Um, if you want, I mean, we can continue. You can continue talking if you'd like. If there's anything yeah, else you'd I like to add. A lot of great questions. I really appreciate it. Okay. Oh crap! Hold on, you, I pushed the wrong button. What'd you do? I can hear you better now. Hmm. I can hear you better now. Oh really? Yes, much better. I don't know what I pushed, but. Yeah. You probably can hear you better because you don't have your hand over your mouth. Oh, oh yeah. I, I was going to upload it to YouTube once I have it edited. Yeah, and then he shares it all over Facebook. He I do. Pretty much spam. So, yeah, I, like, well, like my wife said, I usually, after I upload a video, I just spam the crap out of everybody with it. So, uh, I, I. Any and every group he's in, he's like, clickety, clickety, share. Uh, I'll share it as well. Okay. So just, you know, send me a link when it's um, uploaded. Okay. Yeah, and then I'll, I'll, I'll share it like crazy. Well, thank you for your time. I'll talk to you later. We, Me and my wife got to get to the check, got to go check on our kids and make sure they're not trashed in the living room. Oh, they're not. Sure. Tony okay. Jr. Sure. is climbed into the playpen and playing with Aries. Oh, okay. But, and they just got through watching the volcano. Oh, okay. But we'll, uh, I'll talk to you again um, some other time then as well. Thank, thanks. Thank you so much. Uh -huh, no problem. You have a nice night. Bye. Bye. And that's all the time we have for the video. In the description bar below will be the links to Mimi's campaign page and a few other links dealing with the socialist party so thank you for watching and make sure you click on those links so you can learn more about the so uh, socialist party and real socialist since there seems to be a lot of uh i don't know what you call it a lot of confusion of what socialism really is so go to the links in the description bar below, which is his campaign, Mimi and Angela's campaign page, and also uh, the Socialist Party USA's page as well, so you can see what the actual platforms of socialists are and not what the media tells you. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'm Mordecai Lacrosse. Until next time, farewell and many blessings.